In this screencast, I will show you how the Microsoft message queuing infrastructure is installed under Windows XP. For this, I go to the start menu, open the control panel, double click on the add or remove programs icon, then I select the add remove Windows components tab in this view. <coughs> Need some time. In the Windows Components Wizard, I scroll down in the list box and search for Message Queuing. Here it is. I enable Message Queuing, check the details push button, and because this workstation is not a part of the Active Directory infrastructure, I disable the Active Directory integration, click OK, push the next button and the message queuing system is installed. This needs a little bit of time but should be fairly fast it is. So we finished the installation, closed the programs uh, and then we go into the control panel into the administrative tools, open the computer management console um, this console is the control center of all the services and, and uh, subsystems on your workstation. There's the services and applications node. Under this node you will find after successful installation of the message queuing, the message queuing node. If you open the node you will see there are four areas. First, the sub node for outgoing queues, the node for the private queues or the queues available on this workstation the sim system queues and the trigger management because we would like to create a queue on this workstation we uh, open the right button menu on the private queue and create a new private queue we name it incoming orders say ok <coughs> because we have now created the queue, let's check some properties. <coughs> Nothing special. Uh, basically, a queue has a name. There's a type ID which is currently zero. I don't know why. Uh, you can enable enable journaling. You can enable enable authentication, you can limit the message storage, you can add multicasking, that means <coughs> if this queue receives a message it can forward it to different endpoints in means of address port combinations and you can f as always restrict or uh, extend the security uh, settings of the queue. Let's use that queue now. For this I use uh, Express++. Plus Plus. project I have a symbol project which basically consists out of two PHGs. One PHG is used to send a message to the queue, the other is used to receive a message from the queue. Let's start with sending a message. Well we would like to use the MQ services. We need to include the header file which was generated with the tab dot tab two ch executable. This includes mo mostly constants and defines uh, such as the MQ syntax and so on. The first step when you would like to do something with the MQ services <coughs> you have to create the msmqq info activex object which is done in line number 8. Having this object you can specify a queue path in Microsoft terms that's a format name. The format name basically consists out of the name of the workstation which is this one or the name on the server on which the queue is located. For example the host name of my workstation is this which equals to that so I send the queue I send the message or I work with uh, the queue system instead on this local machine. However, this could be also a different machine in the network such as a server, which is a typical case, for example. 
Okay, first I have to specify the path to the queue, which consists out of the server workstation name, uh, then the private dollar token, and then uh, the name of the queue, which was incoming orders as we have uh, created the queue a couple of se minutes ago. Next step is to open the queue. This is done by executing the open method with specifying the access method. I have to say if I want to send or it means of writing to a queue or retrieval it means of reading from a queue. So we open it with uh, send access writes. If successful it returns as a queue object. The next step because we want to send a message to a queue, we have a queue. Now we have to create a message. This is done using the xspace plus plus 1.9 create object function uh, using the name of the uh, activex class which is msmq message. This creates us a message queue message object. Now we symbol give the message a label which is some descriptive text and we give the message a content it's uh, it means of the body in our sample, we symbol add a small XML token to the message body. Then we execute the send, send method on the message object and pass in the queue, which means we would like to have this message sent to that queue. After this, we close the queue, say message send, and close our small application. Send. Let's build it and execute it. Wonderful message sent. Not very impressive, I have to say, but <coughs> let's open the computer management console again. Let's go to our incoming orders queue. If we open that now, we see queue messages, journal message triggers. Let's have a look into queue message. Here we are. That's the message we sent. Order done, it was the label. Today, the current date, is the message content. The other nodes in the incoming orders queue, incoming orders queue are journal messages, which is used for journaling or auditing purposes, and triggers, which is used to add triggers to the queue. But these are more sophisticated tasks. We will stay with the basic usage scenarios of message queuing. So what we have done up to this point, we have successfully installed Microsoft message queuing under the XP workstation. We have been able to successfully create a queue named incoming orders and we have been able to successfully post a message to the queue. Next step would be to retrieve that message. For this I have written a small sample which I call it perceived PRG. First step, as always, we have to create the message queuing info object, which is some type of representation of the message queuing infrastructure. Then again, we have to specify uh, which queue at which workstation slash server we are interested on. It's our incoming orders. Now we open the queue again, but this time we would like to have read access, so we declare receive access. And then <coughs> we simply execute on the queue object return with the open the receive method because we want to receive something from the queue and um, then we add a timeout of 100 milliseconds because we don't want to be blocked an infinite amount of time then here we check simply if uh, we received an object it means of uh, overrun of the of the uh, timeout or not and if we have received successfully a message, we simply dump out the label and the body, close the queue, and wait because we want to read what has happened. So I change the target. Say build. It's done. Say execute receive. Here we go. Order data, header DDES, today. And when we go back to the computer management console, hit the F5, refresh button, the queue is empty. So clearly because we have retrieve the message from the queue, the message has been removed from the queue because we retrieved them. <coughs> so, that's basically all about message queuing, uh, how to install it, how to create queues, uh, and how to 
send and receive message from anything besides that uh, is a topic uh, not covered in this screencast thanks for listening see you next time somewhere else